Summary The Country of the Blind B. H. G. Wells. The story, The Country of the Blind, starts a long time ago. The storyteller starts by telling the history of a green land that was hidden in a valley in the Andes and cut off from the rest of the world by a series of natural disasters. The narrator says he knows the story because a man from the valley got stuck after the disaster and had to leave his wife, children, and everything he had ever cared about to start a new life by himself. When asked why he left the valley, the man said that the people who lived there were sick with a mysterious disease that slowly made them blind and caused all of their children to be born blind. From his story, a myth grew about a village where only blind people lived in peace and harmony. This myth has been around for generations. As time goes on, 15 generations have passed since the great split that cut off the rumored country of the blind from the rest of the world. This is where the story picks up again. Then the narrator talks about Nuez, an Ecuadorian climber who joined a group of Englishmen trying to reach the top of Periscotopedal, also known as the Matterhorn of the Andes. Nuez gets lost on the way because he fell from a very high place, and the English people in his group think he is dead. He landed with only minor injuries, which was a miracle. But Nuez is in an area that hasn't been explored before. The world behind him is impossible to get to, and the world ahead of him is unknown. He keeps going, and soon he sees a village in the distance, which gives him the strength to keep going. As soon as Nuez gets to the village, strange things start to happen. He doesn't know where he is, and something doesn't seem right, but he can't figure out what. Nuez thinks that a blind man must have done the plastering on the homes because it looks like a blind man did it. The homes have streaks and blotches of different colors. This first thought turns out to be right, as Nuez soon meets a group of men whose actions and attitudes show that they are blind. The mountaineer is happy because he knows he is in the country of the blind, where the one-eyed man is king, in his mind. The proverb is wrong, though, because the people who live in the remote valley have lost their sense of sight after generations of being blind. They think that Nuez's claims are silly and come from his crazy mind. From their point of view, the world is just their valley, which is surrounded by rocks and has a stone ceiling. Nuez seems to have come from nowhere. He is a mystery, and the blind people in the village think he is a new being made of stone. Nuez doesn't seem to be respected for his vision. Instead, the villagers seem to look down on him because he depends on his sight and doesn't know much about their customs and habits. After a while, Nuez gets tired of how the villagers treat him and tries to leave the valley. In the process, he hurts a few villagers and nearly goes hungry. Nuez's half-hearted attempt to get away from the village fails, and he goes back to the village, embarrassed and sorry. He says that his hasty decisions and violent behavior were signs of how crazy the new group was, and he asks for forgiveness. After giving Nuez a severe beating, the villagers let him join their community and use him as little more than a serf. He is at the bottom of the village's social order and is only used for simple tasks and hard manual work. Nuez's dreams of glory and power fade away, and he tries to get used to his new life while putting up with his neighbors and master's disrespect. Shortly after that, Nuez meets a blind girl named Medina. According to the blind men in the valley, Medina is ugly and doesn't meet normal beauty standards. But Nuez falls in love with her right away and decides to go after her. He thinks that if he had Medina, he could spend the rest of his life in the country of the blind. He pursues her, and they fall in love. But Medina's father, Jakob, doesn't like the idea of marrying his youngest daughter to the village fool, and he tries to stop them from getting married because Nuez seems to be full of himself. Jakob is upset, so he talks to the village elders about how bad things are. He says that he likes Nuez and that the man gets better as he stays in the village, but he still has trouble understanding Nuez's strange view of the world. One of the elders, a wise doctor, says that Nuez's madness might be caused by his body, and he suggests taking out his eyes because he thinks they are the cause of his strange speech and half-mad beliefs. In fact, the elder says, Nuez's crazy behavior is caused by his constant fixation on a sense that doesn't exist. Jakob agrees to the marriage, which makes him feel better, as long as Nuez agrees to have his eyes cut out. Even though he doesn't like the plan, he agrees because he loves Medina. As the sun goes down the night before his surgery, Nuez starts to feel sad about everything he will lose. He looks at Medina's face, watches the golden rays of light fade, and takes in the beauty of the mountains around him. The views of nature touch him deeply, and he changes his mind. Nuez starts to walk while still looking at the mountains in front of him. His journey takes him away from the village, away from Medina, and away from his ideas of greatness. Nuez is thankful and humble, so he starts to climb. The hard work leaves him bloody but energized. His clothes are in tatters and his hands are cut up from climbing, but as the sun sets over the valley, Nuez is happier than he has been since he arrived. 
He is cold, hungry, and hurt, but the bright stars above him give him comfort. The story comes to an end when the mountaineer starts to go home. It's not clear if he makes it to the top of the mountain and goes home. Readers are left with the image of Nuez relaxing on the mountainside, finally happy with what he has.